Opponents of gay marriage filed an emergency motion Saturday asking the U.S. Supreme Court to step in and immediately halt same-sex weddings in California, less than 24 hours after the state started issuing marriage licenses to same-sex couples. In their filing, attorneys with the Arizona-based group Alliance Defending Freedom argued that the 9th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals acted prematurely and unfairly on Friday when it allowed gay marriage to resume by lifting a hold it had placed on same-sex unions while a lawsuit challenging the ban made its way to and through the Supreme Court. The Ninth Circuit's June 28, 2013 order purporting to dissolve the stay is the latest in a long line of judicial irregularities that have unfairly thwarted petitioners' defense of California's marriage amendment, the application states. Failing to correct the appellate court's actions threatens to undermine the public's confidence in its legal system. Alliance Defending Freedom Senior Counsel Austin Nimix said Saturday that the Supreme Court's consideration of the case challenging the ban isn't done because his clients still have 22 days to ask the justices to reconsider the 5-4 decision announced Wednesday. Our clients have not been given the time they are due and were promised so that they can make their next decision in the legal process, Nimix said in a statement. The more than 7 million Californians that voted to enact Proposition 8 deserve nothing short of the full respect and due process our judicial system provides. The U.S. Supreme Court cleared the way for gay marriage to return to the nation's most populous state by ruling 5-4 to four on Wednesday that the sponsors of California's voter-approved ban on same-sex unions lacked authority to defend the measure in court. Also Wednesday, the Supreme Court overturned the federal law that prevented the government from awarding federal benefits to same-sex couples. The motion was filed as dozens of couples in jeans, shorts, white dresses and the occasional military uniform filled San Francisco City Hall on Saturday to obtain marriage licenses. On Friday, 81 same-sex couples received marriage licenses. Although a few clerks' offices around the state stayed open late on Friday, San Francisco, which is holding its annual Gay Pride celebration this weekend, was the only jurisdiction to hold weekend hours so that same-sex couples could take advantage of their newly restored right, Clerk Karen Hong said. A sign posted on the door of the office where a long line of couples waited to fill out applications listed the price for a license, a ceremony or both above the words equality equal priceless. We really wanted to make this happen, Hong said adding that her whole staff and a group of volunteers came into work without having to be asked. It's spontaneous, which is great in its own way. The city, home to both a federal trial court that struck down Proposition 8 as unconstitutional and the Ninth Circuit, has been the epicenter of the state's gay marriage movement since then Mayor Gavin Newsom ordered his administration in February 2004 to issue licenses to gay couples in defiance of state law. A little more than four years later, the California Supreme Court, which is also based in San Francisco, struck down the state's one-man, one-woman marriage laws. City Hall was the scene of many more marriages in the four and one-half months before a coalition of religious conservative groups successfully campaigned for the November 2008 passage of Proposition 8, which amended the state constitution to outlaw same-sex marriages. Many legal experts who had anticipated such a last-ditch effort by gay marriage opponents said it was unlikely to succeed because the Ninth Circuit has independent authority over its own orders in this case, its 2010 stay. While the ban's backers can still ask the Supreme Court for a rehearing, the 25-day waiting period is not binding on lower federal courts, Vikram Amar, a constitutional law professor with the University of California, Davis Law School, told the Associated Press. As a matter of practice, most lower federal courts wait to act, Amar said. But there is nothing that limits them from acting sooner. It was within the Ninth Circuit's power to do what it did.